Whew, it is getting heated in Cleveland. What's up guys, it's your man RB The Breakthrough back here again with yet another video. And after LeBron James has ripped his teammates, general managers, and owners, Dan Gilbert and the general manager have responded. Now many of you know that after the Cavaliers lost to the Pelicans, basically LeBron James went off. He went off about management, you know, talking about things that they don't have, things of that nature. And if you would like to get caught up to that story in its entirety, go ahead and click right here and that'll basically get you caught up to date with that story. But one big problem that LeBron James made here was that whenever he was making these different comments and just going off, you know, out of frustration, he insinuated that basically, you know, the upper management that these guys, you know, they just didn't want to spend money and that they were complacent and satisfied after winning the championship last year. Again, guys, I just said after winning the championship last year. So that means that the team that you currently have, which is basically the same team from last year with a few upgrades, it would mean that that team is obviously capable of winning the championship. So just prefacing my statements and you know even what, um, what Dan Gilbert and the GM David Griffin said in response to this, I could understand why they would be mad at LeBron James saying these comments. Now yes, as of late, you know the Cavaliers have been on a serious skid. They've lost six out of their last eight games. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's the regular season for one, and you're in the Eastern Conference. Even with the Cavaliers losing as much as they have, you know, recently, literally, go check for yourself and let's see if, you know, the teams that are behind them have even really caught ground. No, they haven't. Literally, this skid by the Cavaliers hasn't brought the Raptors any closer to the Cavaliers than what they were before. And if that doesn't tell you how weak the Eastern Conference is, I don't know what else will. Now, if you're out West and you lose six out of eight games, you, you may be in danger of not even making the playoffs. But that's irrelevant to this topic, I digress. But yes, after LeBron James made these comments insinuating you know, these different things about upper management, this is how they responded in a recent interview. Now I want you to keep in mind that yes, these, you know, these comments, they're coming from the general manager, David Griffin, but you, we already know that this is basically a combination of what he is talking about and what Dan Gilbert is talking about. Because we know that in many situations, you know, the GM is a lot of times used as a kind of like a scapegoat for, you know, the different things that an owner really wants to say. So keep that in mind. But this is what they said. The comment about the organization being complacent, I think is really misguided, Griffin said. Organizationally, there is absolutely no lack on clarity on what our goal set is. We are here to win championships and there is no other solution, there is no other outcome that is acceptable and there never has been. But in terms of the on-court complacency, I've seen a lot of that. We're a team that will create an opportunity for ourselves to have to dig out of a hole, Griffin said. We do it every single game, it's just how we are. We're not good from the front. We're much better when we're the hunter. I see us every year put ourselves in position to have to fight out of something. It's what we've done as a team and it's hard for me to tell you we're dealing with a lot of adversity when we're number one in the East. But we have a tendency to be our best when our backs are against the wall, so I have no reason to believe that won't be true now. Team executives were clearly irked. It certainly wasn't appropriate from a teammate perspective, Griffin said. Griffin said he doesn't think James said outright that the organization was not committed to winning the title, but anyone insinuating that this organization is about anything other than that would deeply upset me because ownership has invested in this at an absolutely historic level. We have enough on this team to win a championship. Guys, is this any different than what I said in that last video? You have all this complaining going on, yet you have your same team back from last year with a few upgrades and a couple people just out from injury and you're complaining as if like you're the last seed in the Eastern Conference. I truly do not understand how you're going to be the self-proclaimed, yes I said self-proclaimed, 
If you guys don't remember, even LeBron James has called himself this. Do you feel a lot less pressure this finals run just because you are undermanned and you had some injuries uh, as opposed to previous years? Nah. nah I feel confident because I'm the best player in the world. It's simple. He's the self-proclaimed best player in the world and you already have plus two or plus three all-stars on your team, yet you're saying you need more help. Either you're the best player in the world or you're not. Like honestly, I don't see Isaiah Thomas complaining about, oh, I need more help. I don't hear Westbrook, James Harden talking about they need more help. I don't hear anybody on the Grizzlies talking about they need more help. <laughs> and those teams are in the bloodbath not all those teams I just said, but most of those teams I just said, those guys are in the bloodbath Western Conference. I mean, honestly guys, just think about this. Just think about this. Do you really think that players like Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Anthony Davis, Mark Gasol, or you know, Mike Conley Jr., if those guys had teammates like Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, Channing Frye, Kyle Korver, what would these guys be talking about right now? I'm sorry, I don't want to hear it. You have a great enough team already to win a championship. And yes, with the team that they have right now as currently constructed, they can beat both the Golden State Warriors, the San Antonio Spurs, or anybody else that makes it, you know, out of the Western Conference. Now to those of you in the comment section who say, oh Randy, like you're underestimating like the teams out West. No, I will say to you that you're underestimating the issue of rest. Whoever makes it out of the Western Conference, they're going to be battle tested, tired and banged up because every single team that, that you face in the Western Conference, if you don't bring your A game, you could possibly lose against. I'm sorry, in the Eastern Conference, we cannot say the same. LeBron James will be waiting for whoever comes out of the West. He will be well rested as well as his teammates. So yes, that's one of the reasons why I say that yes, the Cavaliers are going to repeat. You're gonna to get to the finals with like with no real obstacles at all. You're going to be super well rested. And then quite frankly, again, I'm not saying the NBA is rigged, but I'm not saying that it's not either. I'm just going to say that I do not like I do not believe that the NBA will let LeBron James lose another finals. Not going to happen. Now, even though it's not a guarantee that the Warriors will actually make it to the finals, if they do make it to the finals, yes, I would want Steph Curry to not only win the championship, but I would want Steph Curry to win a finals MVP. But if they do face the Warriors, I just don't see the NBA allowing LeBron James to lose another finals. But anyway, I mean, hey, literally the Cavaliers general manager and owner, they're saying the same things that I was saying in that video. A lot of you guys are saying, oh, Randy, like you already know the Cavaliers aren't good and they don't have this and that. Really, a couple of losses have you guys thinking like that. Don't be fooled, man. The Cavaliers are a great team. This is the regular season and they're in the Eastern Conference. Both the Cavaliers general manager and the owner, they're saying the exact same things that I'm saying. I'm sorry, no excuses. Now maybe, just maybe, just maybe, if you were somebody like a Mike Conley Jr. or you know, you were a you know, James Harden, something like that. If you're not even in the conversation for, you know, best player in the world and your teammates are Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, okay, then then maybe you might be like, oh, well, you know, I need a little bit more help. But if you are the self-proclaimed- Confident because I'm the best player in the world. That's simple. Then I'm sorry, there's no excuse. If you're the best, get the job done, period. And you know what? A future video is coming out on this. Maybe it'll be tonight. You know, maybe I'll do a, um, a double upload today, but we need to go ahead and revisit the question of, is LeBron James the best player in the world currently today? Whether that comes out tonight or whether that comes out tomorrow night, be looking out for that video. But again, guys, these are just my thoughts and my opinions. Like, what do you guys think? As far as this is concerned, do you side with, you know, Dan Gilbert and general manager David Griffin, or do you side with LeBron James on this? I'm sorry, man, I'm not hating on LeBron, but I, I have to side with the general manager and Dan Gilbert. Many of you guys don't even know that just for the team to get the players that it has right now, they had to go over the luxury tax just to satisfy LeBron James. 
and they had to go way over the luxury tax to keep all these players and even bring some, you know, some better pieces in. So when you're insinuating that, oh, they're just being stingy with money and it's all about money, no, they, they're actually above the luxury tax. So with that quote, when, when, whenever they're talking about, no, like we've done a lot for LeBron James to bring a lot of players here, we've done a lot of things, they're telling the truth. And last thing I wanna say, give my boy Kay Felder an actual opportunity to do some things. It is mad disrespectful to, to be saying, oh, you know, we don't have a backup, we don't have this, we don't have that. The guys that you do have deep in the bench, you haven't even given them a true shot yet. And I'm telling you right now, whether it's with the Cavaliers or whether you guys end up trading him and he goes somewhere else, Kay Felder is gonna have a good NBA career. Man, people are always looking at the grass, you know, thinking that it's greener on the other side. What are your own? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, make sure to stay tuned for more NBA beefs, dramas, fights, things of that nature. But there's not too much else to talk about. This is RB to Breakthrough. God bless literally every single one of you guys. I will see you guys on the next one.